Yes. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And it's so funny that Latara had mentioned um, about one of those mornings where it's like, um, you know, you're tired or, or, or ha whatever have you. That is the that is me this morning. I am very tired, uh, but God did give me um, a word for you that I do want to share. And I hope you all have had an amazing week, weekend, uh, and all those wonderful things. And so I wanted to talk about something that I have shared actually on my Periscope uh, a little bit ago, maybe a week ago or so. Um, and the, the title of it is Destiny Seed. And so this particular um, message occurred as a conversation with a friend who was experiencing some things in, in, in their life and um, had lots of questions and God began to unravel um, this revelation to me of the Destiny Seed. And um, so the scripture that I am going to be referencing today is in James 1 and 6, and it says, but when you ask, you must ask, uh, I'm sorry, but when you ask, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. And so I want to begin to talk to you about the destiny seed. So what is a destiny seed? A destiny seed is a seed of purpose of why you were created. So we all know that in Jeremiah, God's talking to um, Jeremiah and he tells him, he says, <clears throat> before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I set you apart as a prophet to the nations, right? So our set apart, what God sets us apart for before we were ever created is our, is our deposit. It's our deposited seed that God placed on the inside of us. In hopes that we will one day unlock it. That is our destiny seat. And so, you know, oftentimes we get worried about, you know, when God's telling us to do something, we get concerned about finances. You know, we get concerned about, you know, how it's going to happen. We get concerned about, you know, all these questions we have. And God was showing me that everything that your life is to, is, um, everything your life is to possess, everything, your, your purpose, if you're believing God for a spouse, if you're believing God for children, your wealth, Everything is attached to your life that it's found in your destiny seed. And so what happens is once God reveals to us, once we uncover how, whatever our process is, because I understand everybody's process, the purpose is different. So whatever your process is to getting to where God called you to, not really where God called you to, but in what God called you to, because what God called you to is already on the inside of you, right? Right. And it's unlocking that seed, that destiny seed. So what happens is once we find out where God is taking us, there's the seed, right? Time and then harvest. So what we're to do when we find out what that destiny seed is and we unlock it, we open it up, it's revealed, it's uncovered, then it's up to us to spend some time watering it, to spend some time cultivating it, right? And so let me scroll down here on my computer. And then once we spend our time cultivating, once we spend our time watering, then there's a harvest, right? And there's a scripture that talks about, because um, sometimes we'll see little pieces of um, fruit off of what we've watered. And there's a scripture that talks about, um, you know, first there's the sickle, then there's the blade, then there's the corn, then there's, then there's the full ear in the corn. So there's a process. And sometimes we get stuck, we get confused because we see a little bit of the process or a little bit of fruit from our watering of our seed, but we don't see as much as we want to see. And so you have to continue to cultivate, continue to find yourself in place, find yourself in position, find yourself plowing away, right? Find yourself um, uncovering and locking more and more of that seed. Okay, and so a lot of times, let me scroll down. I'm sorry, guys, I have to scroll down my computer. A lot of times, like that scripture was saying above, we waver, we get in doubt, we get in unbelief, we get in worry, we get in concern, right? So it's so important that we stay in position, that we stop moving, we stop waving, we stop doubting, we stop being that unstable man. Because the Bible says an unstable man or woman, right, they can't be, they're, they're unstable in all of their ways, not just in one thing. So the moment that you find instability or some place where you're not stable is the moment you need to go back and find a way to get rooted and connected because you're unstable in all of your ways. 
So you need to be found staying in your lane. And I also want to encourage you with this because sometimes we get concerned about people who are copying us or who are emulating us or who are doing what we're doing. And you have to understand that people can copy, you know, what you're doing. People can emulate you. People can um, attempt to do what you're doing, but they're not the visionary. They don't have the seed. Right. God didn't put the seed on the inside of them so they can, you know, purchase, get all the get all the moving parts to what you're doing. They can have all the pieces to the game, but they'll never have the formula because the success is attached to you and our success. Your success is attached to you growing your own destiny seed. That's deposit on the inside of you and not someone else. So we can spin our wheels, you know, doing what other people are doing, but we won't grow it because that's not what the seed that God put on the inside of us. So our job, our duty is to water our own seed. Our life is found in our seed. So you have to be careful to water it and then watch it produce life. Watch it produce the best life that God has for you. And the other component to that is being able to trust God. You know, sometimes, well, not sometimes, anytime God gives us a dream, it's always bigger than us. It always requires more money, more faith, more people, uh, more access. I mean, it just, it just requires so much. God never gives us something we can do in our own strength. And so because of that, it requires us to partner with him and trust him. And the other day I was speaking to our youth, uh, ministering to our youth at our church. And we were talking to them about trusting God and that's not a hard thing just for young people. That's a hard thing for old people too. Not that we're old, but older people. It's a hard thing for adults, I should say, because we have actually had more encounters of believing God for something and it not happening that we think. We don't see it happening the way we think it should. So our faith sometimes can be more challenged than younger people because we've had life happen. We've had setbacks. We've had disappointments. But here's what I want you to be ever so clear of. When God takes the time to bring you to a born out of wedlock, even if you were um, an act, your parents didn't want to have you, even if you, you know, were born to a teenage mother who gave you up for adoption, whatever your circumstances, you can understand that even though they did not plan for your birth, God planned for you. God scheduled you. You're not here by an accident. It was a scheduled appointment for you to come to planet Earth. Right. And so when God tells Jeremiah, I knew you before the foundations of the earth, what he's saying is I knew you spirit to spirit. Right. And so since God knew him, he's speaking to you as well. God knew you spirit to spirit. And he made a decision that the earth had need of you. Right. So then God sent you to earth because earth had need of you. And on the inside of you, he put what everything your life. Yes, ma'am. OK, can you hear me now? OK, um, so I'm so sorry. And, and so uh, so God, I think I hit my core. Let me make sure I hit my core again. God has need of you. And so everything that he put on, it's on the inside of you. You unlock that seed. But here's the thing. When it comes to trusting God, God took the time to not only bring you to earth. He even took the time for to send Jesus ahead of you. Right. He took this time to send Jesus ahead of you to suffer the worst death known to mankind, the worst death. I mean, you know, most of us have seen Passion of the Christ and they and, and Scott Bible scholars say that even that movie doesn't depict the, the graphic nature and the suffering that God went through. So it's even greater than what we could even imagine. So God took the time, not only sends you, but then he sent Jesus ahead of you, not just to die for your sins, but to make sure that you were able to access every Because the Bible says Jesus came to give us an abundant life, right? He came to give us an abundant, amazing, maximized, over the top experience called life. So if he took the time to bring you here, he took the time to send Jesus ahead of you. You know, there's a scripture that says, um, He's going to make your crooked places straight. There's another scripture I can't think of. It's, I just lost it. Um, well, I'm going to go back to if I think of it. But he took the time to schedule a savior to make sure that you were able to be with him in heaven, but to also make sure that you could live out this abundant life. And the key to that abundance is opening up and unlocking that destiny seed that he put on the inside of you. Let's see. Let me go back up. Oh, here's the other thing I want to enc encourage you with. Because sometimes we don't understand how much God loves us. We, we, we hear it. 
We sing songs. Yes, Jesus loves me. We, we hear it, but a lot of times we don't know it in our heart. A lot of times we don't know it. But think about not just what Jesus went through. But think about, the, and I say this a lot, but I, I don't, I, I say this because there was a study done that said that most of the people who are in insane asylums, those are people who have lost their minds. Most of the people in there are in there because of guilt. There's something that happened in their life and it's driven them to a place of being almost insane or insane, right? It's, it's attached to something they've done. That's caused them to go insane. But when you understand how much Jesus loves you, then you are able to accept his forgiveness. You're able to receive his love. And an acid test, and I always love to do these acid tests so that we can really begin to think. An acid test to let you know if you fully trust God. And the only way we can really trust God is if we know how much he loves us. Because you can't really trust somebody if you don't think they love you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there are people in your life that you don't trust simply because you don't know that they really love you. So you can't trust them. So the only way that you can really know that you trust God is if you are aware of his love for you. And I want, to, here's the acid test of if you know, if you really know how much God loves you. I'm sorry, if you really trust God. If the last thing that God told you to do, you haven't done it, you're not trusting him. So whatever that last thing is that God told you to do, if you haven't found yourself doing it or making steps to do it, you don't trust God, right? And an acid test to know, I'm sorry, I'm looking at these comments. I keep losing my thought. I got to stop looking at the comments on my phone. <laughs> Uh, and so the acid test for if you know whether God loves you is that trust factor. God, no matter where you tell me to go, God, no matter what you tell me to do, no matter what you tell me to say, no matter how big, no matter if the finances are in place, no matter if everybody supports me or nobody at all, God, you told me to do it. So on the authority of your word, right? Not on the authority of my word, but on the authority of your word. Just like he told Peter to walk on the water. Peter said, God, uh, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. And the Bible says on his authority, he began to walk on the water, right? So if you know and you, and you really trust God and you really know his love for you, you will understand that he will never send you somewhere. And it not be a blessed place. Right? He will never send you to do something and he not provide a way for you to get it done. There are so many times God's told me to do things and I'm like, okay, God, have all these questions. And then God sends people to put everything in place. He sends the finances. He sends the people to call me. Hey, you know, I was wondering, do you need some help with XYZ? And it, it's such an amazing place to be when you are in that place of unlocking that destiny seed and seeing the fruit right? The fruit of everything that's attached to it. Because everything that's on the inside of the destiny seed is everything that God ordained for your life to encompass. Now, absolutely, there are things that we have desires for, you know, but there's a scripture that said God gives you the desires of your heart. And I like to look at it as not only does he provide you the desires of your heart, but he actually gives you the thing to, to desire in the first place. Do you know what I'm saying? So we want to find ourselves staying in position. We want to find ourselves doing the thing that God has given us to do without waver, without fear, without doubt, understanding that we can trust a God who knows the number of hairs on our head, who's, who the Bible says his thoughts for us are more than the grains of sand on the ocean shore. I mean, none of us have ever really taken the time to even know how many that is, but that's his thoughts for us. And then the Bible also tells us that our very names are written on the palms of his hand. 